Think about you when I'm making a mistake. When... Welcome back to my shop. In this week, we're going to try a little bit of inlays, which is uh, something I've absolutely no experience in, but I thought it's about time that I'll do something about it. So what we have here are two pieces of uh, oak. Uh, here in Italy, it's called the uh, Rovere, and uh, I think that it's in English. It's called the uh, Irish oak or Welsh oak. So it's a uh, nicely almost orange colored uh, oak. It's very dense. And these pieces are not prime pieces. There's a large crack over here and some cracks over here. But those are test pieces, so I don't mind the cracks and the defects. And uh, what I have here are two different uh, stones or crystals or minerals. What we have here, the green one, is a, a venturine. And let me get it closer to you. As you can see, I've picked up, I'm trying to focus here. Okay, so I've picked up a couple of bags of these small fragments of uh, a venturine, which is a green mineral. And uh, maybe I should have researched before about the hardness of this stone, since I'm, in one of my tests I'm going to try and and uh, send this flat but and the other one let me bring it into focus and the other one as you can see is the the citrine which is an orange mi mineral and i actually see that inside the bag there are some uh, purple uh, fragments probably amethysts these two pieces of oak we're going to chuck them up on t with the wormwood screw we're going to round them up just so I won't hurt my knuckles on them we're going to flatten them out and clean up the faces and we're going to create two grooves in them and also the other one two grooves which later on I will fill with the citrine and the aventurine and one of them I will leave as it is and the other one I'm going to try and send down and then I will be able also to compare the effect that I'm getting from leaving this from leaving the stones untouched and natural and the effect I'm getting when I'm sending them down flat and see if it's worth the effort to do it. A couple of grooves, not too deep, about two or three millimeters deep. Maybe I can make them a little bit deeper. Those are it's not it's not a powder I'm trying to inlay here. So I'll make it a little bit deeper. Okay and now we'll do the other one. That should do it. So these are our our these are our two test pieces. Watch one of them we're going to inlay the citrine on the inside, the other the citrine on the outside, the aventuring on the outside and the aventuring on the inside. One of them we're going to send flat and one we're going to leave natural and see how we like that idea. So let's prepare some epoxy and glue some crystals in the wood. Okay, so I have everything set up here at my lathe because my table is too bogged down with other stuff on it. And I have this plank clamped to my lathe bed lightly so I wouldn't knock it off with my, f with my foot or anything else. I've got the citrine here, the aventuring here, I've got the epoxy glue, the raisin and the hardener, or the raisin and the hardener, a couple of uh, popsicle sticks, a container, plastic container to mix the glue in, and of course my test pieces which will we go to in a minute. First I'm going to do a dry test and just pour the stones in just to see how they sit inside 
to get a feel for the quantity that I will need to fill these rings up. Yeah, that looks about right. And it looks quite nice, if I might say so, from looking at the screen. That is the, the dry test for the Aventurine. Let's put it all back. Okay, and let's do a small dry test with the with the citrine. So that's the citrine, and it also looks nice, although it might look nicer on a darker wood. Let's put it back. And I think I'll start with the the glue run using the aventurine on the inside. So I don't know exactly the quantities that I will need, so this will be a trial and error thing. So, I don't know why I turned the white like this, it never did that before, but... So it's been a little bit more than a couple of hours, more like a couple of couple of days since I've glued this up. So obviously now it is completely cured. Let me focus here. So I really like the way the aventuring came out. Try to keep it in the center. A little bit less the um, the citron and the epoxy that I've used, as you remember, it's turned a little white for some reason, as, this, as you can see, I hope. It's also dried a little bit white. Now, I don't know if it's from bubbles. I think I read somewhere... <coughs> sorry. I think I've read somewhere in the past that if some moisture is introduced into the epoxy, then it will turn white. So I'm not sure if it's a moisture problem or... Thunder and revelry 
So, the sanding is done with 600 grit. And I've uh, applied the, I used, denatured the alcohol between grits to clean off the dust. And now we're going to apply the finish. I'm going to use the abrasive wax and then the friction polish and we'll see how much of the color will come back into this. see the stones are sanded flat and I've applied the finish to the wood and the stone and we will take a closer look at this later on. Now we will try the other one and instead of sanding the stones flat we're going to leave those stones proud only we're going to try and clean up a little bit the wood and see how that works and what I mean is I'm going to try using a, my parking tool maybe a scraper to go in and clean the wood everywhere which is not my stone circle and I want to see if I'll be able to straighten it out or would it cause all the small uh, stones to just fly off completely That's just perfect. Let me see if we can zoom in on this. Let's zoom in. Let's see if we can focus on this. As you can see it completely chipped out my my parting tool. Completely chipped out. I think the epoxy and the stones are really, are a little bit too much for this steel. And this is the result of our experiment. As you can see at the end, I've left this one completely as it was, as I wasn't able even to cut through the side of the stones. We still have this one, this test. Let me focus which I think came out really nice. A few things that I need to consider is one, get a better glue that won't dry out white and also make sure I put enough of the glue inside to fill the voids completely. I might even consider uh, using epoxy with a little bit of dye in it and it will probably be the thing that I will try the next. As far, and th this is as when I'm talking about the, the aventurine, when I'm talking about the citrine, obviously a thicker layer would be much preferable. Uh, and the same issue as here, uh, make sure that I fill in all the voids, either with stones or with glue. So I'm uh, very encouraged by this test and I think I'm going to have to try and go for uh, incorporating some uh, stone inlays in my next project whatever project that would be. Thank you very much for joining me in this week's video and I hope to see you back in my shop really soon.